to say something as a sax player? Or is it well, what you, do you want to just say anything? Yes. About, like... Yeah. Well, I'll just... Why well, um, don't no, just do questions? When I talked to Peter earlier, he said that one of the most um, gratifying things was working with you so that you would learn how to hear the intervals, because we discussed that question as to whether people can actually hear it and how the academy thinks that most people can. So yeah, I'm just well, curious, how did you learn to differentiate besides the production? Well, I'll do this on the uh, soprano, because it's a little bit easier to hear. So the, so the uh, first thing is Peter provided me with sort of, you have the first page, basically a bunch of numbers. And it was basically <coughs> two octaves and a bunch of intervals in between. So I had to go through and figure, OK, well, if it's supposed to be at this particular hertz or cycles, what would that be in cents? So then I transferred it into cents on the, on the uh, tuner to figure out exactly the distances on the, on the uh, tuner needle. And then I sat down with my saxophone and had to figure out what fingerings get me close. Then it was, once I had all that, then it was a matter of um, figuring out how, how, how to put them into to equal places. So, for instance, uh, the Sopranos C to C is the octave. So we have, and it's a, just a set of 53. And you can hear that it's equally spaced, hopefully. Um, when you first start, you get more something like this. And you can hear that's not equal. So it was just a matter of going, well, just a matter, it was hours going. <laughs> Microtones, and I was actually very, very familiar with it at the time because I had just spent hours and hours and hours doing this one. And Peter was like, "Well, how far can you go?" <laughs> and I said, "I don't know. Let's find out." So it was kind of a challenge for me because I knew he was going to throw something crazy at me. And so it was a matter of, uh, you know, just seeing if, if it was possible, if I could perform it, if I could do it. And uh, it turns out you can. It takes a lot of work and a lot, you know, and dedication. But uh, for me, it's just being able to do something that's completely unique and uh, being able to present something that's so, like Peter said, so out there on one hand, but absolutely not in another hand. Um, and I think, uh, and that's what's most gratifying, is people come up and I really liked that poly, whatever you call it, piece. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, like poly microtonal. And they're like, well, I don't care, it just sounded really cool. And I think part of it is being able to relate it back to the 12 tone with the way Peter had it going back and forth. And a lot of it comes across very timbrely, but it all makes sense because I tried to uniform the pitches as much as possible you know, during the performance. It doesn't always, not always 100%, but um, so that. Uh, I'm also using our restricted pitch sets, <coughs> especially for the 53. Because it would be an awful lot to ask of uh, anyone to just, you know, anywhere in the 50, in, 53 different pitches. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, I have the uh, 19 is complete, the yeah. 31 is complete, but the 53 is just a, a, a subset. And some of the intervals are not equal. It sounds like they're not equal. That's what I'm guessing. In the, uh, the selection part, among correct. the 53 was it oh, all just um, I don't exactly remember what I have, but I think I do have, uh, I think it is, they are contiguous or continuous. Yeah, they are. They're, they're see through. Uh, it were just some melodies that I was guessing were skipping all <laughs> No, I do have <laughs> some. <laughs> that cell phone doesn't really deserve a cell phone. No, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just an iPhone <laughs> I have about 22 pitches out of the 53. And uh, I'm drawing a, a staff. Maybe I should erase this. I'm 
trying to rework the staff so that it's more visual. That's, you know, the standard is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this. And in order to display microtonal symbols, you have to come up with... Uh, uh, there's one note. And by the time you get done with a, like a, a fast flurry, it's going to be <laughs> this much space. So you're going to wind up having long measures, unless you're writing very simplistic rhythms. I used all ear. But what I'm trying to do, or what I did in this, that I'm passing around, is I'm using something called a fat staff. It's going to get really funky. That's actually, uh, well, it's, it's kind of hard to draw with this. So even though it's changing color, I didn't worry about it. Like this. And uh, it gives you some visual acuity. And it, it's still the same thing, right? Every good boy does fine, and then, uh, you know, you have uh, to... <laughs> so then... The performer can see, <laughs> based on uh, you know visuals, where it is, and that, that way you get to uh, keep some rhythmic integrity. Right? So, um, yeah, I, I think I know how you can do that in something like finale. I mean, not that anybody asked, but well, I don't know. I, I how do you how do you, <laughs> the staff has always seems seems to be just like anchored in. It, it, like it's unmovable, and everybody just wants to change the pitch and add all these ridiculous, like Vishnagradsky. Uh, I think he had up to like 12 different kinds of symbols, and one of them looks something like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just goddamn ridiculous. But, you know, I mean, how are you going to put that in front of something? <laughs> the longest game of tic tac toe ever. Yeah, so it's like the, you're trying to convey, uh, you know, a, a nice little passage like the, like this that winds up being, you know, <laughs> and then you know your triplet winds up taking that much space. No. <coughs> so why why have why hasn't anyone thought of just changing the staff? And by the way, this isn't my well, it is, but it came from uh, Agnes Martin. And she's not a musician, she's an artist. She's a minimalist artist. And she I saw one day, I was just watching TV, and uh, there's this woman, uh, a real tough woman. <laughs> and she was drawing these minimalist paintings. And they were just parallel, no, yes, lines, horizontal lines. And they looked just like staff. Well, it was just four lines, but I thought, if you add one more, that would be the perfect staff for putting microtonals uh, visually. You know, and then you can actually see it, and then you can keep the rhythmic integrity. So I, I kind of got the idea from Magnus Mark. Have you, anybody heard of her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you know her art? Yeah. Lines. <laughs> yeah, lines. Staffs. <laughs> Staves. What, uh, there was definitely Tambo. I mean, I, I was fascinated and, uh, and sucked in by <coughs> what seemed to be maybe a default timbral consequence. Um, I didn't hear a pattern in the timbre, so I thought that they may have been a consequence of the production of that um, microtonality. I mean, so timbre is a really loud thing, so I'm wondering as a composer, um, did you systematize the timbres, or was that, as I say, just a, con a consequence of no, that was just fallout. See, I, that's what I was wondering a little bit of, like, how much is the microtonality actually physically changing the timbre just because of the, the construction mm -hmm. of the instrument? Yeah, I mean, it would change. If I played a different brand, a different instrument altogether, it would change. What do you mean? Like so a different kind the of The timbre would change if I, if I played a different brand of saxophone. So, wow. if I played, so, like, if I played a brand new saxophone, <coughs> If the timbre may or may not change on those fingers. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean you, were, you said that you were trying to keep the timbre as even as, 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 even could, as possible. And I'm wondering, you know, how more interesting could it become 
if the microtone structure is actually changing the timbre as well, and you're not trying to even it up. Because I mean, for me, if you want even timbre, just get a synthesizer and let like, that's not going to change. I was my ear every time that timbre changed. I'm like, oh, what's making it change? And so for me, that became a critical component of the composition. Well, I, I guess it's just <coughs> luck. 